Wayne, if I might start asking you the first question. What was it about Audrey's work that led you to want to collaborate with her? Because on the surface, it would seem to me like your work is quite different. I thought that doing a graphic novel on stage would be really interesting. I think where there's an economy of text and some fantastic, rich mm. visual language. And then, of course, I, so I asked Audrey if she would write a graphic novel, and then she, of course, didn't write <laughs> something else, <laughs> um, which has been fantastic. But that's, yes, that's how that, that started. That was how that started. Yeah. And Audrey, do you know and love dance? Did you know Wayne's work? <clears throat> how did you react when Wayne approached you? Um, well, I was incredibly excited. Um, I'm actually pretty ignorant about dance. So if you ask me dance questions, I'll just turn <laughs> beat red, I which I think I am. <laughs> what I really love a lot in all the different art forms is process. And so having seen lots of different people working in various ways, I was really excited just to find out what would happen if we tried to do this. And I had every intention of giving you something with very few words. <laughs> <laughs> um, part of what happens is that um, Wayne particularly wanted aquatints. Uh, which is what the adventurous is, and uh, perhaps not realizing that it takes a really long time to make an aqua tint. And so um, in, order, in order to have aqua tints, there were fewer pictures than there might have been. But I still managed to make uh, 22 pictures in 12 weeks. Yeah, that's impressive. So, you know, we about killed ourselves, me and my assistant. <laughs> um, when you were writing Raven Girl, did you have in mind the fact that your story needed to be translated to stage, did it affect your plot or your structure? You heard the story, what do you yeah. think? It's like, no well, way. <laughs> no. On the other hand, Wayne said to me, I said, oh, well, I, I'm, I'm thinking real hard about making it danceable. And he said, oh, don't worry about that. Oh, OK. You did actually say that. I did that. say that, no, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, totally so your I just, fault. You know, so I just went ahead and did what I do, you know. I just kind of wiggled them around and let them dance in their own weird little way. And, <laughs> You know, yeah, you can't have uh, dialogue, you can't have characters going around thinking things, and you can't transmit anything by words. And so I knew that there was going to have to be some radical transformations, but I figured, well, you know, that's okay, Wayne can do that. So you just let the story run free, basically, to go. Yeah, yeah, well, what I did was I looked at a lot of fairy tales, and I thought, well, what's a fairy tale? And what sorts of things happen in fairy tales? And then I sort of tried to make that sort of thing happen in my story. But I also tried to make the characters a little more psychologically complex than mm. you find in your average Grimm's yeah. sort of story. Yeah. So I was hoping that whatever I gave to Wayne would give him enough knowledge of the characters that the characters would stay true to themselves no matter what the story mm. ended up doing. So that's... Yeah, I was trying, I was trying to make the characters that, yeah. bulletproof while the story could kind of be pushed and pulled a little bit. But did Wayne... Did you ask specifically for a dark fairy tale? I don't think so. I think I just said a fairy tale. Well, you right? started by saying a fairy tale, and then later we were discussing it, and you said, oh, I want it to be really dark. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> early, early, early on, there was talk of black on black. And oh, I was still, like, yeah, black on black. Yeah, yeah. So, so that was good. I was all, you know, I mean, I never go out of the house wearing anything brighter than this, so uh, I'm in purple, woohoo. Um, so, yeah, I was, you know, I was all over that. I knew, I knew we were psychic twins when I realized that you wanted to do that. <laughs> I love your opening line, once there was a postman and he fell in love with a raven. It, it's kind of all there in the story. But Wayne, um, how have you... That's given you tremendous opportunities to flesh out the characters. How have you tackled that? Have you looked a lot at Audrey's illustrations or mm. has it come from reading the story? Well, well, I think there's several things. I mean, there's a lot happens in that story, right? Yeah. So just from a kind of a, a practical point of view of how is it that you actually tell the, those major or significant story points? How do you do that? And I think, what, uh, you know, I, I mentioned earlier on, we w want to make it kind of a, a bit like a piece of visual theatre. And by that, I mean, you know, I love this French um, uh, theatre artist called Philippe Jonty. And one of the fantastic things that he um, is able to do very economically and swiftly is tell stories nar narratively without any mime. Yeah, so it's mm. a series of um, kind of uh, visual images that, that stack up against one another. One, then this happens, then this happens, then this happens. And we're not going back into backstory, you just accept it for a fact that this is happening in that moment. And that was one of the things that uh, Audrey talked to me a lot about very early on was the anatomy of a fairy tale, where you don't have to do all of that explanation. Why is the egg behaving like that? Or why is the raven... Um, feeling like that. So that really appealed to me. That's the first thing about that. There's a lot to fit in. But also, um, Audrey draws very physically. And so her, her um, drawings already have kind of a, an implicit physical grammar inside them. And 
I found that extremely useful in being able to translate those plates, if you like, into things which would be dances. We always knew from the beginning of the project that we wanted to kind of do this project in three stages. There would be an object of a book, and the book would have its own life. There would be a stage version which would deviate in some ways from the book and then the, um, the narration of the book. So some characters are absent in this story version that we've done. So I don't have any cats, for example. Um, but the, and we've, we've pushed the story in slightly different directions. We've interrogated it and played with it, like plasticine in different ways. So the bones of the story are there, but we're telling it in a different way. And we're hoping that the third iteration of this project would be a filmic iteration. And, and by that, we mean not so much a, a film's version of the stage show, but actually something which have live action animation, some text and voice, a, a kind of a totally different kind of property. So we've always thought about it in, in that way. It was absolutely fantastic for me to have. I mean, I, I've been lucky in, in that I got all of the plates and I got, you know, they delivered these amazing aquatints to be able to work with and live with. And obviously, I had all of the text, I had all you to talk to. Um, and all that, but it was an absolute thrilling thing to get the book, actually get yeah. the book. And I'd seen it in lots of stages, but to have that object in your, your hand where you turn the page and you experience time in a particular way, you see the organisation of sentences in relationship to image and sentences for a while, which tells time differently without any images, and then double spread images. The kind of the, the, um, the logic or the literacy of the book really helped us understand what we needed to do to organise it for the stage right, yeah. to be able to tell those kind of key yeah. uh, story points. This is a story that's going to be remade and, and in a language that is so thrilling to me because I don't speak it. It's like, it's like you know, listening to Portuguese and you're just like, wow, you know, look at that. Aww. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that's a wonderful way to end. Thank you very, very much, Audrey Infinegger and Wayne McGregor. Thank you. Thank you.